What's going on everybody? So as you guys all probably know, last Sunday the Jaguars decided to suspend defensive end Dante Fowler Jr. and cornerback Jalen Ramsey for a week. And this isn't su suspending them for the first game of the regular season, even though Dante Fowler is missing that game due to other reasons. Uh, this is actually just basically missing a week of practice and obviously the next preseason game. So, you know, the big thing going on is the Jaguars as of today, which is uh, Tuesday, they actually flew out to Minnesota and they're going to be holding some joint practices with the Vikings and then playing their preseason game this Saturday. So I just wanted to, you know, now that about 48 hours has gone by uh, and now that I've seen kind of what some people's thoughts are about it all, I want to kind of revisit those two situations. Now first I kind of want to talk about Dante Fowler Jr. And the main reason why I want to talk about him is just because after this happened, you know, a lot of Jags fans and just a lot of media people or like fans of other teams are just kind of talking about how the Jaguars should try to maybe trade Dante Fowler Jr. or cut him and, you know, whether or not he's like a locker room cancer, just all this different kind of stuff. Now, the interesting thing about Dante Fowler Jr. was, you know, obviously he got in this basically three different skirmishes uh, in this practice. One with James O'Shaughnessy and two with fellow defensive end uh, Yannick Ngakwe. And Dante Fowler Jr., as we all know, he's not a stranger to getting in trouble. He basically has amounted to a lot of different like traffic citations. Uh, last year, he got in trouble for like punching a 56-year-old guy, throwing his groceries into like a lake. And also, he was like caught refereeing a fight between his current girlfriend and has like his baby mama just all different kinds of stuff has kind of gone on with Dante Fowler Jr. and as you know obviously a lot of fans are probably like fed up with it and they just want this guy out of here and then uh, a lot of people will kind of ask like is this guy kind of a locker room cancer and you know with me I you know if you ever ask me like what do I think we should do with Dante Fowler like I think we should absolutely keep him and there just because I think he has tremendous value to this team when I see him on the field. I can't speculate what he is like off the field. I can't speculate him as a person. You know, I know he's a valuable and he's a good football player. And, you know, a lot of people were kind of bringing into questions like character concern questions and kind of saying that this guy's like a bad person. But for me, like, I think, I don't think he's a bad person. I just think he lacks a lot of immaturity and he lacks judgment. I think he's a lot like former FSU quarterback uh, Jameis Winston. You know, I don't think either of them are bad guys. I just think their maturity level is really down and, like, obviously they just lack a lot of, like, judgment. And uh, with Dante Fowler Jr., the interesting thing about this whole thing is uh, the fact that, first of all, Jalen Ramsey got... Uh, suspended basically for defending Dante Fowler Jr. But Dante Fowler actually got into a fight with Yannick Ngakwe twice. You know, usually you hear about fights between defensive and offensive players. You know, kind of like when I hear uh, Dante Fowler Jr. and James O'Shaughnessy got in a fight. It's like, you know, it, I don't really bat an eye to it. But then, like, the fact that he gets in a fight with Yannick Ngakwe is kind of crazy. And really, this whole... Dante Fowler Jr., Yannick Ngakwe beef. It's been going on since last year. I remember actually last year I made a video because after Dante Fowler got caught with the whole uh, fighting thing with the fighting the old man or whatever the hell happened there down in St. Pete, uh, Yannick Ngakwe basically put out a tweet, basically subtweeting him. I forget what he said, uh, but it was basically like calling him out saying, you know, I'll eat off your plate if you ain't going to take it. And a lot of people didn't really read too far into that, but I did. And I did enough to actually make a video about it because I was sitting there saying, like, you know, if if Telman Smith were to get in trouble, would Miles Jack be out there tweeting something? If, you know, Blake, if, like, TJ Gallon went out and got trouble, would Leonard Fournette be tweeting out stuff? Like, I was just kind of reading into it and just thinking, like, why would a fellow teammate and also, like, a player that's in the same, like, position unit as you, why would they go out and tweet something like this? So, I went out and, like, made a video about it, but I have, I did put the video on private just because... Uh, I didn't, after rewatching the video, because it was one of those videos for whatever reason, after I posted it, kept hitting a lot of views, and I couldn't really understand, like, why, but, you know, I went and rewatched the video about a month or two after I posted it, and, you know, I didn't like what I said in the video, 
I was basically bringing it. I was kind of judging the guy's character without actually knowing him personally. And I kind of learned a lesson from that. And I just basically said, you know, I'm going to only judge players for what they are on the field. I'm not going to try to make judgments on this guy's character if I don't know them. You know, kind of like with the whole Alan Robinson thing. You know, I wanted Al Robinson back because I thought he was a tremendous player on the field. However, I didn't know what, you know, like with all the field stuff, I'm not going to kind of sit here and say he doesn't like Blake Bortles or he doesn't like Jacksonville. He, uh, you know, wants all, you know, I'm not going to make those kind of assumptions about a guy. I'm just going to judge a player on the field. And, you know, I went ahead. If you guys want to watch that video, I'm going to leave it public for another maybe two weeks. So if you guys want to watch it, I'll put it up above. Uh, but it's basically going into kind of the tweet that Yannick Ngakwe put out and how I was kind of diving into it. Now, you know, I hear about people talking about, you know, what could they possibly get out of Dante Fowler Jr. if they were to trade. And, you know, I would just, you know when people ask me, I say, you know, I would have to get at least a second rounder just because... He is a very, very valuable piece to our team. I mean, he got eight sacks in a backup role. He's like a third down specialist. Um, you know, he's a tremendous player to have for depth. And if we were to not have Dante Fowler on the team anymore, the guy backing him up is Laurente McCray. And, you know, our depth all of a sudden, our defensive line depth all of a sudden gets a lot worse. And, like, with a team that's really ma making, like, wanting to make a Super Bowl run. Like, I feel like this is like, we need a piece like this. He's extremely valuable. We put him on the field on third down. He helps get pressure on a quarterback. And, you know, I think that there's a lot of leaders on this defense that can uh, kind of make him, like, straight for at least, hold him off for at least a year. Because, obviously, he's on a contract year. He's not going to get re-signed by the Jaguars. I mean, we have Yannick Ngakwe. I mean, he's kind of a headache. He's, he's going to get paid probably premium pass rusher money for a team that's loaded with cap space kind of like the Jets and Colts that don't really have like an edge rusher so like keep him on a team like I think he's like extremely valuable and like you know all I see all these everywhere saying oh all you can get is like a sixth or like seventh rounder out of the guy like screw that man I would never trade this dude for that kind of like pick like I mean, he's a good player, obviously has some, like, uh, character concerns, and when you think about, like, him and Yannick Ngakwe, their chemistry, you know, like, I think they could still work on the same field together, you know, it's not like, uh, like a quarterback is having personal issues with a wide receiver, you know, it's not, like, that would be an issue, or if, like, a, you know, like, if Miles Jack or Telman Smith would be having, like, an issue, like, you know, th the positions that you really have to communicate a lot in, you know, those are the kind of things that you do need chemistry, but, you know, these guys are basically lined up at the other side of the field from each other. Like, you don't need one of the, you, like, the defensive end, there's really not much communication going on. You just basically go in there and rush the passer, you know. Like I said, it's not like linebacker. It's not like quarterback. It's not like, you know, left tackle or left guard where they have the other communication on. They have to get a feel for each other. Their basically jobs is to, like, you know, rush the passer. And, you know, there's just, like, I feel like Dante Fowler, man, uh, we got to keep the guy on the team. He obviously lacks maturity issues. He's uh, got, you know, he's lacks judgment calls. Like, he's obviously he's just not super, super smart. But, like, I don't think he's a bad guy, you know. I think he does really like the game of football. And, you know, I want to keep this guy on the team. Like, I don't want, I don't want to trade him or give him away or cut him for God's sake. Next, I want to talk about Jalen Ramsey. Now, Jalen Ramsey is also going to serve a week suspension from something actually stemming from that same fight. There was a media reporter that was basically recording the final skirmish when they were leaving the field, and then Jalen Ramsey saw that and basically yelled at the reporter to turn the camera off with a little bit more obscenities. And as he was coming out the field, he kept yelling stuff to the media, kept kind of being rude to them, and then uh, one thing that developed after the fact was how uh, they actually went out to, like, they held a private meeting between Jalen Ramsey and the media. It was a closed meeting, so, uh, you know, you can't really get any quotes or anything out of it. But from the media people that were there, they basically said that the meeting was a shit show. You know, it basically went in circles. They didn't get anywhere. Jalen Ramsey still kind of held his ground. And Jalen Ramsey's a guy, like, and I'll go and say this, after... Uh, this whole thing. I think the guy. I think the guy tweeted out the video after the meeting, and then Jalen Ramsey responded to it, basically saying you messed up. Uh, I'm paraphrasing here, and that you won a war, you got it, kind of thing. And two days later, he went on this random blocking spree on Twitter, where he was basically blocking all of like the meet, like all of the local media between people at 1010XL. Uh, I believe different like writers and stuff like that. So. 
Jalen Ramsey all of a sudden has like all this beef with the media and I'm not really sure like it all really stemmed from that recording. I mean, like the thing is like with with me, I mean I can understand, you know, him being mad about them recording and everything, but the guy didn't break the rules, you know. Uh, he was allowed to. The guy literally asked the Jaguars if he could. They said you can't uh, not tell him to, but and then the guy posted it. Now the thing is when I saw the video you know, I saw the video after I heard about the fights. When I watched the video, I mean, it's not like I thought any different about Dante Fowler or the team. It was just a skirmish. I mean, I saw highlights from like a Jets versus Redskins skirmish where they're like literally the whole team is basically fighting. And this one, you know, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I can understand Jalen coming to the defense of the of the meat of the Dante Fowler Jr. and everything, but I think he's going a little like overboard here. I mean, he could have went sat down and talked to the guy. And just said, hey, man, I would appreciate you then not recording it. But, you know, he goes out there and just basically cusses at them, like goes off on them, um, and just like extremely rude to them. And then, you know, this whole thing has occurred now. Now, Jalen Ramsey is definitely a guy that I've noticed ever since he got to the Jaguars. I mean, he's always had his guard up around the media. And I'm not really sure why. I mean, I know from listening to 1010XL and reading different things about Jalen Ramsey, the media seems to love him. I mean, they're always writing positive stuff about him. They're always talking about how he's the best cornerback on a team. So I'm not sure why he's having this whole mentality of, like, media versus everybody. Like, that whole thing, just, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. So now I tried to kind of ask myself, like, where is it going to go from here? You know, now that he's blocking all these people, is he also going to stop letting, like, getting media access? Is he going to stop letting reporters talk to him? Is he going to be giving, like, Marshawn Lynch, like, answers? And, you know, I think it could potentially hurt his, like, national, like, his national popularity if he does this because... Obviously, like the new, like the media loves him because he puts out a lot of quotes. He like speaks his mind, and you know those quotes go out to NFL.com and different Sports Center Instagram pages, and you know that's how people kind of know who he is and know his kind of personality. But you know if he stops doing this, all of a sudden Jacksonville is kind of a small market, so you know his stuff isn't going to get out there as much. And you know I wonder if this will like hurt his national popularity and. I just, I just don't understand his whole like motive with this. I mean, he has always had this like beef against the media. You know, he's always had this like media is out to get him kind of thing. And you know, he's just got to respect the fact that the media's out there doing their job while he's out there kind of doing his job. And the media, I mean, it's the thing is like, it's all like I've heard people say analogies like, oh, that'd be like you coming into my house and all of a sudden like you know me and my brother get in a fight and you go out there and talk about it it's like yeah sure but at the same time you still know they're there like Jalen Rams and all them they know the media is there so they're going to be able to access that kind of stuff and like tweet it out and like report it and they're just doing their job and you know Jalen Ramsey like I think he's just I, I I understand the fact that he is defending his teammate and you know as a teammate and like you know he's protecting his team and I do appreciate that about it but He's going at it the whole wrong way, I and mean, he's being super mature about it. And uh, I just hope he—I just hope he can kind of come out of this, and we can keep winning games, and we can kind of forget this whole thing happened. But uh, it's definitely kind of a speed bump in this whole thing, uh, you know, in this whole like preseason whatnot. But we do finally have a little drama after there really hasn't been any like fights or anything like that going on, or any big headlines out of Jacksonville. But you know, we've got this now, so. Uh, Jalen Ramsey and uh, Dante Fowler Jr. are both suspended for a week, obviously, and that's not the regular season. Yeah, I just kind of want to get those thoughts out there. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. This is UCO Jaguar with JinJag.com, and I'm out.